Hi everyone, it's Grant Abbott speaking and welcome to this session on Advanced Healthcare Directives. Um, to be brutally honest, um, I was expecting to roll out all the uh, AHCDs, but uh, once you delve into them, uh, they're probably the most complex documents uh, that I've ever seen uh, compared to a will, an SMSF will, or even a, a very advanced SMSF strategy. Um, these things stand by themselves, which is quite understandable given the fact that, uh, you know, from a, a client's point of view is they're making uh, decisions around uh, their health care in the event that uh, they're sick. And, uh, you know, it's really come home to roost uh, for me personally. Many of you are aware my father passed away a couple of weeks and we had to invoke the health care he was he was virtually terminally ill and you know had his kidneys were failing so we uh, luckily we had a, a reasonable um, advanced health care directive in South Australia where he wasn't fed um, and also wasn't uh, doing uh, taking water now that also mum was the substitute decision making and you've obviously would have gone through that process with me for South Australia a couple of weeks ago so that, that really came home. And then yesterday, I mean, what's going on with 2020? I mean, can it get any tougher? Um, yesterday, mum mum found a, a lump on her breast last week. And I hope you guys don't mind telling me that, uh, me telling you this, but and that's who I am, pretty open book. Uh, but uh, she f had a lump on her breast, went and got a check yesterday um and uh is getting operated on on wednesday to remove um one of her breasts so she's going for mri on monday so obviously she's freaking out as well but um she's got an advanced care directive which um not at this stage but over the weekend i'm just going to take her through that to make sure that i'm really on top of exactly what she wanted because she did complete it with a lawyer down in in um in adelaide um nice lawyer but uh, let's face it, at the end of the day, he's not family. Um, and I don't want to get caught in that that sort of um, situation. So uh, let's see how we go anyway. Um, so uh, today, I look, honestly, from what I've seen, <laughs> you believe there's another guy who I religiously watch on podcasts and same sort of thing is what this morning he comes up and pretty gutsy went out and said, look, you know, you know to all the, his listeners, on YouTube that I found a you know seven centimeter growth on my neck, blah, blah, blah. It's not this, it's a cyst, it's cancerous, and, and he had it yesterday. So there's huge changes that are happening at in at this this time. So, you know, my my heart is with everyone, um, particularly around COVID. And I think um, you know, I'm a great believer in uh, disease being disease, that we're not not really in balance with our body or our mind, etc. Uh, and I know my my mum's an absolute eternal warrior, so uh, uh, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, but uh, the mental health stuff that's going to be coming down out of uh, all this COVID, I shouldn't laugh. It's it's just a crazy situation, which means from our perspective, all of you, um, you know, it's a good time for all of us to step up to the plate. Um, keep that heart open for the, the client. I know for I know planners, you, you're pretty good. Accountants, um, we tend to be closed. And lawyers, <laughs> have got no. I don't know if you ever saw that um, that slide or that that graph I did. That uh, lawyers, um, although they may be very knowledgeable, have as much empathy and warmth um, as prostitutes. So. Um, it's really a good idea, I believe, to bring all of this sort of stuff in house and work your client through the process. Uh, COVID has had obviously a, a big impact on all of us. Um, and now we, we're in a situation that we're going to have the systems and tools to do uh, injury powers of attorney, advanced healthcare directives, and wills, plus a lot more. One of the ones that we will be uh, releasing uh, coming down the track is a living. Uh, SMSF living will, which is a set of directions in the event a member becomes incapacitated. So they're binding on the trustee. So uh, I've got one of those. It just has to be uh, tidied up and, and put into the system. Uh, the other one is that we've got a, um, 
uh, inter vivos trust or like a living trust, which for many people might be better um, set up rather than putting everything into the estate. So we'll talk about that uh, later on um, down the track. But obviously we're, we're building more and more solutions down this area. Um, and it's funny because once you start digging down the rabbit hole, as they say, so I think we've all been, or well, everyone is going down this this rabbit hole, we're all actually being red pilled because once it starts to open up, you know, there's just this next bit and then there's this next bit and there's a next bit, which is great for us because it's really a, a great uh, professional change for me. I mean, no, I had to do my bio. I'm doing a talk for our accounts discussion group uh, coming up on the 5th of October. And um, I had to, my typical bio was all around SMSFs. And it's funny these days, probably most of my teaching, um, learning, and uh, also uh, work is probably uh, non SMSF related and uh, only about 10% is SMSF. It's good to have that as a base but it just shows you the the area that we're all going to or growing into um, is a pretty exciting area and there's a huge demand from it. I'm not sure if I, I told you before, but uh, I know a good friend of mine, um, George Haramus, uh, H&R Block sent out a um, survey to uh, their client base seeking, um, they gave them a whole range of other services that um, you know could H&R Block provide and 82% of respondents came back and said that they wanted uh, help with wills. So certainly that area that um, I believe that uh, accountants and planners who the trusted advisors have got a, a great opportunity there. Um, and the hard thing about lawyers, as we've all seen before, is that uh, lawyers don't have that relationship with the, with the client. They just go in, you know, they, they take the instructions. They don't know anything really about the client. So that's where you guys fit in um, really well. So um, I'm going to go through today. Unfortunately, um, I haven't been able to get all of the um, other documents up and running by today. I've got Queensland ready for today. Victoria is very close, as is New South Wales. Um, you'll find with each of those, um, un unlike South Australia, which had the Advanced Healthcare Directive and a substitute decision maker, uh, both Victoria, New South Wales, and also Western Australia, you need to have an alternative, a substitute uh, or medical decision maker. Um, and that's a separate form from the AHCD. So what we've been involved in is quite a, a difficult process of bringing those two documents together to make it um, very simple and easy. So um, I'll, I'll take you through Queensland today and, and how, I how I approach Queensland and... Um, and then uh, what I'll do is next week, I'll, I'll roll out Victoria, New South Wales, WA, ACT, Northern Territory and Tasmania. So what I'll do is I'll do a video, every time one comes up, I'll do a video so, um, and I'll put it up on the site. So it'll only be like a 10 minute one as I go through the, the system. So this is gonna be more one that's general that covers uh, quite a lot there. So uh, strongly advise because they are quite detailed in shape and form, I do love, personally, I love the Queensland one the best um, out of the lot, and you'll see why very shortly. And I'd love to be able to adapt that to the other ones. Um, so again, that's sort of sitting in my thinking. And we'll go through that one, but I'd strongly advise that you go and do one yourself um, and read the document from front to back. Um, then do one for your spouse, uh, your parents, etc. So you have a really good understanding on it. Uh, and then from there, you'll, you'll really have a good idea. Um, it can't really be done in isolation. Uh, so you'll find that uh, the large majority, well, all, all the EPOAs, and we're gonna look at um, the EPOA for uh, Queensland as well. You really need to be looking at doing the will, the uh, EPOA, and also the Advanced Healthcare Directive as a trio, and perhaps even going down the track, the second part of that would be the SMSF will and the SMSF living will. So we're starting to get a, a good coterie of that. And um, what we'll do is I'll, I'll start to put those in an automation as well. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. But in from a standalone point of view, um, the Queensland one is uh, up and up and running. 
So um, what I've got, uh, as I said, you've got um, in Western Australia, Victoria, New South Wales, that a medical decision maker. Um, in uh, Queensland, it's actually your enduring power of attorney who takes the responsibility for health. So it's all a bit of a hodgepodge across the various states. But I just might get um, uh, Tony there. Are you there, Tony? Yep. Good morning to all. Oh, that's good. So very friendly voice, which is great. So do you just want to go through the process um, again? Uh, we'll, we'll get to our five step if they want to get out of more involved, but just some of the key preemptive uh, processes and requirements for an advanced healthcare director generally, who who's going to sign it, who's the best person to, once you've done it, to deal with, yeah. um, et cetera. Because it's really, a, it's a more of a medical, uh, I suppose it's legally binding on medical practitioners. So it's more in their field rather than the, the legal field. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because each state and territory has its own, um, you know, sort of like legislation uh, for advanced um, planning um, and health directives. Um, what usually happens is rather than the lawyer signing off and witnessing, because we're not medical practitioners at the end of the day, right? So what it's preferred is um, if we're going to do an advanced um, healthcare directive, is actually the client will need um, preferably to go to its um, medical practitioner to get that um, signed or witnessed because, um, and the reason because, sorry, is um, that the uh, medical practitioner um, is fully sort of like conversant with a file uh, with a patient. So he only knows what, you know, what medical condition and what he wants and what he um, really wants, what type of health and medical decisions need to be made. Um, so that's really um, a, a matter that needs to be determined between um, the medical practitioner and its patient. So there you go. Um, uh, and certainly in terms of, and I think for all of those three documents, um, uh, capacity is a big issue, isn't it? Yeah, capacity also. So um, it'll be, and. What, Whilst, whilst the clients, you know, whilst the uh, patient or clients there, um, it'd be probably a good idea also to get a uh, what's called a medical um, testamentary capacity certificate also. So in the case where the client um, wants an APOA done or a will done, then um, then we've got that um, certificate, and um, we can rely on that upon that certificate at the end of the day. Um, so there's no uh, ramifications or issues in the future um, um, in respect to that, in that regard too. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's pretty, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely crucial. And I think, um, you know, just saying, do you want to speak up a bit more? I think you're yep. a bit away from the microphone. So yeah. Tony's in Melbourne, so unfortunately, <laughs> I think he's very depressed, unfortunately. No, no, um, COVID, so, no, no COVID with me, mate, let me tell you. That's right. So um, if we'll go, we've been through this before, but let's just go through this five-step process as well because I'm going to take you to the Queensland AHCD, but before that I need to do the um, uh, will and enduring power of attorney for the client. So we'll go there and then we'll, we'll blitz into the Queensland. So again, this is, the, this is the process that you should really be looking at the client. The Advanced Healthcare Directive is the, the third part of that, that trilogy um, so you've got the will, obviously, that, that sparks up when you die. You've got your enduring power of attorney, which uh, ceases on death, um, except in one instance, which I'll show you. Um, and then you've got your advanced healthcare directive, the same thing, which is just prior to, to death or, or that sort of thing. So just want to take us through that five-step process, um, yep. how Abbott Morley gets involved, um, yep. the costing on it. I'll talk about the costing. Okay. Uh, but more importantly, how... Um, uh, how they will charge, or how an account will charge the client, um, and then how we get uh, our fee, etc. Yeah, for sure. It, you know, it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty simple process. It's not that hard. All it starts off is basically the client. I mean, the advisor basically prepares up the data capture sheet, collects all that information, and then inputs it through the old Y system. Um, then it spits out basically the will or the EPR way. That's step one and step two and um and when that's um, been completed 
um, that process is then, or the will or the EPOA uh, will be sent to me. And this is where we get involved in step three and four. Um, so there'll be two Zooms. One Zoom is practically, you know, to obtain any final instructions, review the document. If the document needs to be amended, we'll do it there and then. Um, we'll, you know, I don't want to wait around for two weeks at the end of the day trying to get this, you know, these minor amendments done. Yeah, no, exactly. You, want you to know, we've got to do it. We've got to, we've got to act on it pretty proactively, you know. So, um, and that's one of the, um, and that's one of the things that we want to do with the clients and the advisor. So it keeps the advisor happy, it keeps the client happy also. Um, and they, and those Zooms practically run for, you know, 45, 60 minutes, uh, depending on the scope of work that we need to do or the amendments that we need to do through the system. We review it again, and the client's happy at the end of the day. Um, we open up our files. Um, we open up our, we open up a file that allocates a, a, a matter number. We send out more importantly a disclosure statement to the client and to the advisor to let him know or she know basically what we're actually going to charge. Right? That's that's important. Okay. Um, so there's no misunderstandings um, in the um, in the long run when we come to completion of step five, okay? So we have another Zoom, we finalize the documents, and then we're ready basically with the client, we'll set up another Zoom so we can execute the EPLA and the will, right? So once step five is completed um, and it's been signed off, then what we do is basically in accordance with our disclosure statement, uh, which is prepared up at uh, step one, um, it'll spell out basically what work we've done, um, how much it's going to cost, fixed, of course, and then um, and then it's sent uh, to the client, and then in terms of collecting our fees, well, we'll you know issue the tax invoice to the advisor, care of the client basically, um, and the advisor can either pay it or he can get reimbursed from the client or whatever the case is, whatever arrangement there is between the client and the advisor at the end of the day. But more, more importantly um, is the disclosure statement and the cost agreement that's going to go out to the client so he's or she's aware that what we're going to charge is actually in fact correct. So there you go. It's pretty easy. Yeah, so just to, again, um, Abbott Morley, you probably have got a bit of an idea. We, we're completely different to any other law firm is that yeah. uh, we work for accountants and also planners and professionals. Um, although we do uh, come in and uh, drop in and, and talk with clients, but uh, you essentially are the, the, the people that we look after so that this process uh, protects you from any legal professions uh, challenges, mainly because we're doing the whole process. There will be instances in one and two that it's going to be a very, very basic will um, mm. and you're going to feel comfortable. You might not need to have our sign off for that. But we start going down the track of doing a will with an enduring power of attorney advanced health care directive then that's where you probably want to go down that track um, and definitely have got testamentary trust so that when we do that first Zoom, we cover the whole three documents together. Uh, and I think it's important for you guys as well that now is that um, you really want to start doing those whole three documents together, which we'll do. So I think from our perspective, let me just bounce out of here and, and thanks for that, Tony. So I'll, I'll just jump out of here and what I'm going to do is um, have a look at our, um, uh, we'll have a look at our, oh, there you go, you can see I was watching, listening to a bit of disco music to keep me happy. Um, what I'm going to do here is um, I've just gone into my folder. And so this is the Abbott test folder. And I've done this one previously. The last time it was opened was September the 11th. In fact, if you haven't seen this little thing here, uh, this tells you um, all the times it's actually been, been completed. So your document log is that uh, new feature that we've put in. So I'm going to go in the uh, relaunch. I'm going to go through the will and the EPOA quickly just to show you where it sort of fits in before we then drop into the advanced um, healthcare directive um, and uh, uh, cover those ones there. So we've got the Smith will and EPOA, so that's okay. Uh, we've got all the common parties. I've got John Smith, 
uh, Five Smith Street, Brisbane and Queensland. Um, I've got his wife, Jane Smith, uh, who's also obviously at the same place. Notice how we've now got the ability to do overseas addresses as well. Um, so we've got the son, Jim Smith, who's over in New York. Um, we've got Sarah, who's the daughter, who's over in uh, Perth. Um, and then we've got John's mum, the old mum Smith, who's in Sydney. So everyone's going through there. Then we've got uh, the best friend, who's going to be Jeff Jones. So they're all our common parties. Again, what I will do is uh, we now will put the, once I get all the advanced healthcare directives uh, down pat, uh, what we'll do is we'll drop that document in here as well. So you can do three and one because it's silly just doing two when you can actually do three. So um, here you can choose um, obviously all the, um, you can choose an EPOA from wherever you want. And by its very nature, I mean, this technology is quite amazing because behind that you've got um, like seven different EPOAs and they're gonna have seven different advanced healthcare directives that you can choose. Uh, for example, if uh, Michael, you're, you're, down in, uh, you're down in Canberra, you'll be able to do your ACT ones, uh, both EPOA and advanced healthcare directives plus the will. So I'm just going to take you through this really quickly. So what we want to do is enduring power of attorney. Uh, I just want to show you what Queensland's like. We're going to do a basic will. Um, and then remember, we want to tick this box, the, um, I want to tick the, the yes box. Um, and that's, that's pretty important from that perspective because uh, embedded in this documentation around EPOA and also wills, and obviously the advanced healthcare directive is that um, you, the documents that you are preparing, remember, Tony took you through step two, the documents you're preparing, which have been signed off by Abbott Morley, have simply been created from a data capture um, and the information you've got from the client. And if and for those of you who haven't seen that session I did last week, the optimum way of dealing with clients, uh, particularly in the Zoom led times is not even worrying about a data capture, or you can do a broad data capture with a client, uh, but get the client on Zoom and then simply ask them the questions that we're going through here. So for example, if it was here, I just say, okay, John, so you're the, um, oh, you're gonna be the principal, um, who's gonna be your attorney? Is it okay for Jane to be your attorney? Do you just want Jane by yourself or do you want me to add another, for example, Jim or, or Jeff Jones, your mate? Um, let's say we could just go to Jane. Um, and then we go down um, to personal health matters. And so in Queensland, that's absolutely crucial because that's the lead into the advanced healthcare directives. So are there any terms or conditions that need to be met? Um, so we can put in there, um, please take into account and act as attorney uh, for my, so Queensland, advanced health care directive. So I'm going to put that in there. Um, and, and I will come around to putting these little boxes in and stuff like that. So I'm just going through the process of updating the SMSF wills at the moment. So this is for personal health. Um, now we've got uh, Jane as being the attorney. Um, now what we've got there is a replacement attorney. Um, so I could use anyone. So I've put Mum Smith in there. I could have used Sarah or Mum, but um, we ask that question and it's important. You must complete all these bullet points because it has a quite a big um, change. So we've got mum in there. Uh, we haven't got uh, a second replacement, but I'll just put a second replacement in there just to show you. And all I have to do there is second replacement. We're going to make it, um, uh, we're going to make it uh, Sarah Smith. So we've got the original attorney, uh, replacement attorney and now second replacement. Now the financial one, I just want to talk to you about this. Uh, we've got Jim Smith, who's in New York um, and Jeff Jones, who's the mate as well. So um, we went down that track. Just while I'm here actually, uh, I had a, an accountant uh, yesterday who asked me, they said that they've got a client um, and they've got no one. The client doesn't feel as though they've got anyone to be executor. They want to be an ex as an executor. So I just said that, in that instance, um, it's very rare that I, I would would agree to it, argue for it. But I said, look, um, as as their accountant, or if they've got a lawyer or a planner, um, they can act as an executor. Uh, but if you are acting as a as an executor, um, I strongly suggest you get an indemnity 
uh, from any acts you um, uh, you do as executor, just in case something blows up down the track. You don't want the other family members to uh, come and take a ping at you. So get an indemnity agreement um, in relation to that. And we can help you if need be um, through Abbott Morley Lawyers. Um, so we've got the, the two, this is financial matters. I'll just go through here quickly. I don't want to, um, so this is the Queensland one. Um, we, you can see here, there's the three things. So the first one is, uh, let's say the gym uh, uh, that uh, John doesn't have an SMSF. So we don't need to turn that one on as well. So we don't need to show that it's gonna act as replacement director or replacement trustee. Um, do anything on behalf of the principal they can lawfully uh, do by an attorney. So this is in relation to financial matters. Um, and then act as a successor director. So this is this is pretty crucial because you're not going to find this anywhere else. Uh, you do, I know there's a, a couple of legal firms um, uh, that uh, do offer the ability to run a successor director. And you have to think about it, like if you're incapacitated, got COVID or die, um, you know, who's actually going to run the company or continue to run the company? It's all very well that the shares go into the estate, but, you know, if probate's locked up for six months, that whole business could fail. So you need someone to make a decision, and that's where a successor director is. Now, that's just included part parcel of our EPOA rather than having a separate agreement. I know uh, a couple of uh, law firms would do separate agreements for that and they charge $1,200. So just tick that box for anyone who actually, if you've got uh, clients acting as director um, and uh, we'll go down and have a look. So I've ticked that box. Uh, any additional powers of the attorney? Remember this is a financial matter, so you can put the conditions in there. Are there any terms and conditions that need to be set? I've got no. Um, they can act severally. So that's both Jeff and, um, uh, Jim, I'll make it. Um, I'll make it jointly, and then we've got when's it going to apply. Now, as for financial matters, we're going to make it immediately. Obviously, for the healthcare, um, it's when they get crook, which makes sense. Uh, replacement attorney. So this this relates to uh, not the health. So this is a this is interesting. Queensland has a two part: a health and then a financial. It's called their long form um, uh, injury power of attorney. So what I've got is there, I've got uh, Jane Smith, um, and then what I'll do is I'll do a replacement as well, uh, being, I'll go there, is a succeeding um, joint? No, and I'll just make it, um, I'm gonna make it Jeff Jones, how's that, he can go in there. And then we don't want a second, second replacement, so that goes there. Um, so this is the company, um, so we've got Jim Smith, um, who's the, uh, sorry Jim, it's John Smith, who's the uh, director um, and the company is Cocky Farms. So um, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have a successor director there and those successor directors uh, will be on the financial, will be both Jim and also Jeff Jones. Uh, I won't go too far into the will uh, because um, obviously we, we wanna really focus in on this the advanced healthcare directive. Uh, but if you haven't seen the system, uh, we can uh, do a separate uh, will and enduring power attorney for the spouse. So you can actually do, this is like a mini moat, um, so or mini healthcare and uh, wills moat. So you can actually do everything in just this, this one document. So I've got the test data um, there. Make sure you put your name as the firm providing the administration services um, to the executor, that's absolutely crucial. Uh, we've got the executor there. So I've got Jane and also uh, Jim, who's the son. Um, I've chosen that successor, Mum Smith, um, and then second successor, I've got Sarah, um, and third, I've chosen no. So again, we're gonna we're getting that succession. Can you see how there's all this succession happening? And that'll also happen with your medical decision maker as well. Um, although that applies here. So the binding vote, uh, we can choose Jane or jo uh, Jim. So I'm going to choose Jane as having the power of the binding vote. Uh, we've got the principal beneficiary. Um, so we've got Jane Smith here. Why she gets 75% of the estate, uh, but um, if she's not around, it's to be paid to the secondary beneficiary. Uh, Jim Smith is the son. Uh, he's getting 25%, uh, but because he's got kids, what I do is I would choose that one there. So that if he's not around, it actually goes to his bloodline children um, and they could go into a testamentary trust on that one. And I love testamentary trusts these days, um, particularly when they come out of super. Most of you, I mean, were you guys aware that your SMSF trustee can create a testamentary trust? 
So when we're talking about the estate, we're talking about the SMSF trustee. So we just built that um, process into our SMSF wills. So the secondary beneficiary um, is Mum Smith. Um, and remember, if Jane's not alive, um, then her 75% goes down here because Jim's been looked after separately. So she gets 50% of the estate. Um, but if she's not around, it's going to be paid to the other secondary beneficiary, which is Sarah, and she goes the same one. Now, if they're both uh, not alive, um, then is there a tertiary beneficiary? No. And you'll find what happens is that goes to the bloodline. Uh, specific gifts, uh, we've got uh, we've got jewellery. And I've chosen yes there, um, so that it's all going to be looked at. Uh, the executor can distribute as they see fit. I've chosen Sarah. She gets a Jaguar car. Jim's get a farming property at Warwick in New South Wales. Uh, so that's specifically. So the executor will look after these specifics first, and then whatever's left over goes principal, secondary, and tertiary. So it's fairly logical. Uh, digital assets um, like cryptos, LinkedIn passwords, all that, I'm just going to say no. You can actually, under our deed, you can have a separate executor. So if you go here, um, you can have a special digital executor, and that's a, that's an Australian first. So child guardianship, obviously, is not going to be an issue. Uh, pet guardianship, oh, no, probably not. And then funeral wishes uh, to be left on the 15th green or bunker uh, at the Chinchilla Golf Club, which is an uh, interesting thing. So that's our that's our EPOA will. Uh, I won't go into the, the whole will itself, but... I mean, you can see it can be done pretty quickly with our client. And as I said before, if you're on a Zoom, you just simply cover all of this. So what's your funeral wishes? Where would you like to go? A lot of people say, well, I'm not quite sure, but we, do you want to leave that up to the executor, for example? You know, do you have any digital assets? Do you want a separate executor? So the, the questions are all there. That's why I prefer actually to using this system um, rather than going through a data capture. Um, the data capture is not a bad idea to get their mind together. So we've got here the last will and testament. Uh, as I said before, uh, the first thing we've got is a, a letter there. You put the date up, important information about your will and during power of attorney. So the attached will and EPI is based on the data capture form given to you by Smith Accounts. It uses current legal precedents provided by our firm, uh, Abbott and Morley. Um, and it talks about your enduring power of attorney, your will. Now, this is the, the key one we want to have a look at here. Uh, it's important that you read the following as if legal nature extends beyond the data capture administrative processing completed by Smith accounts who are not solicitors do not hold themselves out as such. However, your advisors are expert in estate planning matters, including taxation, asset protection, succession, and ensuring where required the estate is limited to deceased bloodline or lineage. So we then go down there um, and uh, what I'll do now, it, um, there's an execution um, document as well. So I thought of everything. This is our enduring power of attorney. Uh, so we've got a, a two form here. Uh, so um, we go through all the commentary uh, and uh, it's not a bad idea for the clients to, when you send this in a draft form, that the clients read this. So I always would send it in the draft. Um, remember, if you're having a chat, um, send it in a draft and then um, send it to us in draft so we can have that uh, meeting if need be. So we just go down to the, um, the document itself. So this is the one for personal and health matters. So I, John Smith of 5 Smith Street, um, Brisbane, Queensland appoint James Smith as my attorney under enduring power of attorney for personal health matters. Um, I authorise my attorney to do anything on my behalf I can lawfully, lawfully do by an attorney. In the event of my initial attorney is unable to act for reasons of death, incapacity, resignation, retirement, my replacement attorney is Mum Smith or blah, blah, blah. Um, and if she's not around, then it goes down to Sarah Smith. Um, so um, we just go through, um, there's a, the, the act is um, by a majority. Um, I'm not sure, I think I did that. Um, and then we go through and then it's basically signing there. And I will, I'll jump out of there now because that's your, your health one. Um, and then the other one is your, obviously the financial. Um, so if we have a look at it, um, uh, we can act uh, there for, I'll just show you the, um, notification here so that there should be a um, set of binding resolutions so we sign all those from that I'm um, just got to be careful about who can witness it that's crucial uh, this is the resolution to act so 
he is to ensure the co uh, continuity of company uh, decision making. The directors seek to appoint a successor director for the current director, John Smith, where they have lost their decision making capability, die or become bankrupt. So we use the concept of successor director rather than the alternate, because unfortunately, on death, the alternate director um, just drops out. So obviously, because the original director is there. So successor director is the place that you want to be. So it's both Jim and Jeff will come in at any point in time. So that's that one. Um, if we go in and we can have a look um, then into the, um, and given time, what I'll do in the document categories, you'll see you'll go into estate planning. Uh, remember we did one for South Australia and now we've done one for Queensland. So you can just uh, pull the Queensland one up at any time. Uh, next one will definitely be New South Wales um, and then also Victoria, then Western Australia. Uh, Western Australia, I'll, um, it's, Unfortunately, the West Australian one is very barren in terms of um, what you can, not what you can do. It doesn't give so much instruction as we see with Queensland, uh, but uh, all the rest will, will certainly have out in the next two weeks. So that's a, uh, so that's a, a, a promise uh, from me to make sure uh, that um, you get to uh, get all of these. So that's going to be absolutely crucial. So let's uh, go in and have a look. Um, I'm not going to go from scratch because uh, I just want to take you through. I did one, um, you'll see just before we came on air. So this is in my Vault Abbott test um, and you'll see it's going to be the last document. So I'm simply going to go down to relaunch. Uh, for those of you who are subscribers or licensees, one of the important things about our system, and I know uh, my good friend Peter Rule uh, thinks the system's a bit ugly, which the outside is, but the, the guts of it is um, pretty ugly. Uh, but it's, you know, it works and it's really robust for us at this point in time, allows us to put a, a lot of documents um, together. So um, ultimately, um, we are in the process, for those of you who you may, you may well be shareholders, um, I will be writing something, but we are at the process of looking at um, we're tendering or getting people to tender for the next uh, Lightyear Docs 2, which will be available in April next year. Um, so uh, that'll be very exciting. I will still continue to retain this one uh, primarily for different purposes of Abbott Bali and stuff like that. Um, but you'll see here we've got the um, that, that, that system there. Um, so I've got the Advanced Healthcare Directive. Um, this uh, will find its way, uh, as I said before, uh, it will find its way into um, uh, the uh, will and uh, or the will with testamentary trust and EPOA as well. And it'll still be a standalone. So in terms of the maker, uh, we've got John Smith, 5 Queen Street um, in Perth, uh, which is fine. Um, Ian Felberg, what happens if the person moves to a, a different state? Um, you'll find that your EPOA um, is still effective. So if I had a South Australian one moved to Queensland, I can still use the South Australian one, uh, which is fine. But the preference is if you are up in Queensland, so the EPOA is okay, but if you're up in Queensland, for example, Ian, you're doing an advanced healthcare care directive, obviously all your medical decision makers, your doctors, et cetera, are gonna be up here. So I'd wanna do an advanced healthcare directive in Queensland. I think it's, it's a lot more robust. Uh, we put in the doctor there, as Tony said, uh, it's very important that the doctor is really the key person. Unlike the injury and power of attorney, where you might get sign off from Tony as the lawyer, um, here it's really the doctor. So we have gotta put the doctor's details in. Um, if you want, you can tick yes. Um, they're actually to be consulted by your treating medical practitioner or no. Um, now, this is what I like about the, um, compared to all the others, uh, New South Wales are similar to that. You can go through and tick boxes, which will then put things in. So, so the maker requests and you just tick the box. So the first one is, everyone responsible for my care initiate only those measures that are considered necessary to maintain my comfort and dignity with particular emphasis on the relief of pain. So I'd be going absolutely yes for that one. Secondly, any treatment that might obstruct my natural dying either not be initiated or stopped. Um, so, you know, depending on your age, I'd probably, you know, if he's only young, I'd probably say maybe not the case. But again, these are, what you're doing is you're making a preparation, dealing with this and then 
then the process, as Tony said, is that they will then go and sit down with a doctor and cover all of these, and then come back to you. So let's go, we're not gonna go that. Unless required for my dignity and comfort as part of my palliative care, no surgical operation will be performed on me. So palliative care is uh, obviously when you're in the process of being terminally ill. So that's not a bad one to think of. Um, should the healthcare providers give all available treatment if the maker is unable to give directions? Um, and I'd put there all available. But are there any special conditions, uh, for example, for healthcare? To, so you can see there, um, uh, allergic to penicillin. Uh, does the maker have particular health wishes? Um, and I've just put in there to ensure that my life is in a comfortable state without pain. Uh, does the maker have any person he or she does not want to be contacted? It's funny actually, because I had a chat with my mum and she said, make sure you don't have a chat with blah. So you, you never know what your client wants. Um, do you want to donate your organs or your tissues after death? So you can, if you tick that box, then obviously a lot, lot uh, other stuff will come up. Uh, one of the things we have missed out on on this, and I'll be doing this straight away after this, is uh, in terms of religious. So there should be a box on uh, special religious uh, conditions there. So um, I'll get that done, and I'll just tweak. There's a couple of little tweaks I want to make to Queensland uh, very shortly, but that'll be done um, uh, straight after this session. Um, so we've got the general instructions. Now, this is what I like about the Queensland one because it actually goes into specifics. So, for example, select the treatment the maker wants. And I, again, I'll fix up the language. Select the treatment the maker wants in the case of serious illness or injuries. So I can tick, um, yep, so I want cardiopulmonary resuscitation, but I don't, don't want all these other ones. Um, now, the treatment the maker wants or the other treatment the maker does not want. So, for example... Um, so no, um, if terminal, do not, uh, so we've said the resuscitate, so do not resuscitate if you want to, uh, permanently unconscious, um, I've left that blank. So if you're permanently unconscious, um, I would go, you could go this, 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 um, uh, uh, only for a maximum period if in coma or no longer than four months. So if you're in a coma for four months, you're getting all of this and you're still alive, then obviously um, that will be ceased at that point in time and it will go through that, that process. So the next one is, uh, um, so we went through the terminal phase, uh, the vegetative state and other illnesses. So we go through, if you're in vegetative state, what do you want? Um, I tick out well, all of those ones because that's virtually like a coma. Um, and then other serious illness or injuries, for, for example, like mum's having breast cancer, so that's a serious illness. But you still want to have all of these sort of things, only if not terminal. So I put that in there. Um, enduring power of attorney, yes. Um, so that's the Queensland long form one we've done. Uh, do you point one for personal health matters? Yes. Um, and we've got James Smith there. And again, if we wanted to make a joint. So that'll pop up and let's go through and have a look at the document itself. Uh, and because that then covers a couple of these issues that I know uh, uh, Ian did. And so this is uh, one that's actually produced by, um, I think it's the Australian, uh, the Queensland Public Health and Safety. Uh, I will uh, send this to you. Uh, uh, with the, once I get uh, the um, recording up, we'll put it up. But you can see here, this is form four, the Queensland uh, powers of attorney. I understand there might be a new one coming around. So uh, we'll look for that one and, and make changes uh, as we see fit. We've got our Victorian enduring powers of attorney. There's a new one out for that. Thank you very much for um, Gordon Black for that one. So I've got that one. I've just got to do these advanced healthcare directives and that's the next one uh, off uh, the shelf. So this talks about all the, the advanced healthcare directive in Queensland. Everyone's, remember we saw the one in South Australia, which is very instructive, uh, but uh, the, every competent adult has a legal right to accept or refuse any recommended healthcare. It's relatively easy when people are well and can speak for themselves. Unfortunately, during severe illness, people are often unconscious otherwise, unable to communicate their wishes. At the very time when medical uh, many conditions, uh, critical decision need to be made. By completing this, you can make your wishes known. Uh, so what is it? It's a document that states your wishes and directions regarding your health care, which we've just been through. 
Um, can anyone make uh, have to be over 18? Um, so what do you need to consider? So we've already, already talked about that one. Um, so unfortunately, can't talk about euthanasia. Uh, we have to talk, we, we'll incorporate that into Victoria. That's why Victoria slowed down, um, only because it's uh, illegal under the, um, uh, under the criminal code. So um, you can't uh, uh, expect everything. Um, so when we have a look here, uh, if you, this is the key one here, if you've already given someone enduring power of attorney for personal health matters, all you need to do is discuss this directive with that person and complete section six when you come to it. Um, if you have not yet appointed anyone, I wish to do so, you'll need to complete seven of this form. So you can do that, but it's better to do the will, EPOA and this all together. And obviously you can revoke at any point in time, you can get help. Um, and then obviously we've got to be very careful. Again, we need to have our doctor, the principal, and get our witnesses, uh, which are okay. So let's, uh, let's just jump down and have a look at it. Um, and uh, so it looks pretty ugly, doesn't it? But anyway, uh, so I, John Smith, uh, Queen Street, Queensland, being over 18, make this directive after careful consideration of my own free will. Um, so um, this directive should never be used if I have the capacity to speak competently for myself with the evidence um, that has been revoked. So that's absolutely crucial for that one. So um, if uh, so these are the questions that we looked at. Um, if I temporarily lose capacity and I'm able to give directions, um, then I want my healthcare to, to um, providers to give me uh, all available treatment. Um, where we've got this button, I'm actually going to change these buttons from uh, ticks and crosses because they they just don't uh, do it for me. You can't really tell uh, they're there. So generally, when you see this target, it means that um, it's a it's a negative. So are there any special conditions? Um, yes. So that's a, a tick. It's remember I put in allergic to penicillin. Now this one here. Um, oh, I'm going to have to go there. That's one. It looks as though we've missed on our interview form. And I know that's very imp important for uh, a number of people. Um, so uh, that will definitely be uh, our next um, little thing. So just give me um, uh, today and, and that'll be fixed up. So this is uh, going through um, system vent ventilation and all that. Um, I request that everyone responsible for my care, blah, blah, blah. Remember we ticked that one. So you'll need to initial there. Um, we didn't put that in, so that was excluded. So what I'll do is I'll actually take that out. Um, and again, so all these things just need to initiate, initiate there. Um, now this one is, I like this one. Uh, if I'm in a terminal phase of incurable in illness, um, again, this will be a tick box. So I do know what colony palm cardio, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So you need to initial that there to confirm. Uh, I do not want assisted ventilation. I do, um, I do not want artificial hydration. So they actually have to go through and do that. Remember, this is a legally binding um, agreement for any medical practitioner. So go through and have a look at that one. Uh, remember, we looked at this in the interview form, permanently unconscious. Uh, as I said, I'll change these to ticks and crosses so they'll make it a lot easier. Uh, permanent vegetative state, we had a look at that. Um, this is the seriously ill. Remember, I talk about like my mum with cancer. Um, I do not want, I do want cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Uh, I do want assistive ventilation. So we've ticked all those ones um, there. And um, uh, then we go through, uh, I've ticked no for the consent of tissue removal after death. Uh, we initial that one. And then we go down into the next phase, um, which is your personal statement. Do you have any particular wishes? And I've got yes. Um, and that is to ensure that my life is in a comfortable state without pain. Uh, do you wish to mention any people who are not to be contacted? We've got no. Um, and uh, obviously can put a list of there. Uh, doctor involvement. Um, so it is recommended the Powers of Attorney Act that you sign this document in the presence of a doctor. It's strongly recommended that before completing this document, you discuss it with your general practitioner or a specialist medical practitioner who knows your medical history and views. The doctor will then be able to explain any medical terms. So I think that's that's pretty keen to get this done um, in the process um, and then get the client to go off to the doctor, um, let them have a chat with this about this and also get um, a capacity certificate for wills, EPOAs and also advanced healthcare directives. So um, the doctor will go through that process um, and then they sign, the doctor signs. Enduring power of attorney, so I've got yes, 
Yes, and it's Jane Smith. So that then gives me the link. And remember, this is part six. Um, and uh, if I lose capacity, make healthcare decisions and my, the directions of this advanced healthcare inadequate for any reason, authorise my attorney to make decisions for me. So this is how it links in. I like the way it links into enduring power of attorney compared to the other states. And I only wish that there was one for all the states. But anyway, um, statement of understanding, that is that uh, this statement declares you fully understand the directives you're given read through it carefully and then sign on the line that follows. Um, you must sign a document in front of a qualified witness, that is someone who's a justice of peace, commission of declaration, a lawyer or no republic. Uh, the witness must be over 21. So again, you can do a Zoom uh, witness again. Uh, remember if you're in that five step process that Tony was talking about here, um, you have a Zoom there and that final, um, that final finalizing of the document, you're gonna get the will signed, the EPOA signed. So you might as well get this signed um, and witnessed uh, from uh, Tony as well. Um, so you get it signed and then send down to him and he'll sign it as well. Uh, so that's the witness's certificate. Um, he's obviously going to be ticking there that it's a lawyer. Um, and then we just go down to section 10. So the attorney's acceptance, we've got Jane Smith. She just tick, 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 and then uh, obviously sign. So you can see it's a lot more complex than <laughs> Then the wills and all the enduring powers of attorney we've done. Uh, but again, uh, given its import and, and you know, that effectively you are making, truly at the, the end of the day, you are making a, a life or death decision. So it's pretty crucial. But uh, uh, anyway, leave that with me. Um, I'll come back. Uh, that's, uh, that's the Queensland Advanced Healthcare Directive. The other ones, uh, as soon as they're out, I will do a video on them just to take you around pretty quickly. I won't worry about doing the EPOA and wills because you now understand that. Um, and so watch out for those and then they'll all sitting up on the strategy center. But again, main thing is to do your will, your EPOA and also your advanced healthcare directive together. Um, and I would strongly suggest that you start off doing it your first. So I'm going through that process uh, now for myself. Um, uh, another one uh, which is important, so uh, coming up on the 14th of October, I don't know if you've received notification for this yet, uh, but certainly we will be um, sending it out with this recording uh, later on today. I'll send you out the link. Uh, but we've got a workshop from 9am to 1pm on the 14th of October. Um, so in that, there's um, both myself. Um, if I just go out, I think I've got it here. Um, dum, 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 dum. Where is it? I think I've got it here um, in Slack. Ash did it yesterday, so it's up and running. Uh, I'll just take it through pretty quickly with you. So uh, we've got Succession Asset Protection Estate Planning Workshop. It's, uh, it is a true workshop, so it's four hours. Uh, we'll go through the, the process. Uh, Tony will be there, Tim as well, uh, and also myself. Um, so it'd be pretty exciting go through and have a look at it. But what we will be doing is um, uh, pulling together, we'll be using the moat uh, primarily uh, and how to utilize the moat and really cover the protector, uh, cover um, all of the advanced healthcare directives and show you how to build that process really quickly and also efficiently. Uh, Tony's going to give a section on, which I think is fantastic, particularly where I'm at the moment, on exactly what happens when you die, what's the process. Um, what needs to be put in place where you guys fit in. I'll cover it from a uh, SMSF point of view as well. Uh, and then uh, we'll have uh, Tim talking through uh, the interview process, what he does, how he targets clients um, and how it's really added um, to his um, uh, business. Uh, for all of you who are subscription users and licensees like Ian Felberg, Papandrea, all you guys, it's all free. So that's just part and parcel. There's four CPD hours for FASIA or four CPE hours um, if we look at it from a tax practitioner's board. If you're just a LYD basic user or change GPS, it's 49. Anyone else, it's $149. So uh, make sure you get in on that one because uh, I've got a lot of stuff to send to you before that. So that's going to be a, a very exciting um, half day workshop on that one. And we are looking and it's the first one here and I'd love to get your guys feedback. Um, in the past, um, I used to run uh, uh, seminars uh, for clients of accounts, which in some instances have worked really successfully. Uh, but I have done about three now webinars for accounts clients. 
So what I'm going to do is for the people who turn up here, probably a week or two uh, will be two weeks after once you get your, you know, you get your grounding. What I'll do is I'll have a general uh, webinar, uh, which you can um, get your clients to attend. Um, give them the link and doesn't matter. We can have as many as we want on there. Um, I'll be talking about how it important is to get the advisor. We'll really go through wills, um, asset protection, and uh, obviously uh, uh, during powers of attorney and advanced healthcare directors will cover the legal side, why it's important um, to work with Abbott Morley and also your accountant or planner, your advisor, um, to make sure that uh, you get this process done quickly and it's from someone who you know really well. So if you're interested in that, let me know because um, it's easy uh, for um, uh, uh, Dennis. Thank you very much for that one. Um, so if you'd like to go through that process, um, just let me know on, on any feedback. So it's a great opportunity for me to uh, get in front of your clients, say how important you are uh, in terms of advising and just do it on a general uh, basis. Anyway, that's, uh, that's enough from that um, session. Uh, as I said, uh, we've got quite a lot going on here and uh, the Advanced Healthcare Directive, sorry, I'd love to have got it all up and running today, but uh, it's certainly been a, a lot tougher. As you can see, when you go through, it's probably the toughest document uh, that I've actually had to produce uh, to date. Anyway, it's Grant Abbott signing off. Um, thank you all for turning up and particularly you, Mr. Um, Lim at the end. Uh, and uh, again, uh, for the, all of those, if you do turn up for this, uh, one of the key areas that I'll be spending 20 minutes on is the new uh, Succession Asset Protection Estate Planning Advisors Association. So we've got the um, company name. Uh, I've got the minutes that I'll go through on the day or allow you to do that. For those of you who want to get involved, that'd be great. So we'll talk about that on the day. Anyway, it's Grant Abbott uh, signing off. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, and uh, I'll let you know when the, the rest come up. I'll make those couple of changes to Queensland and send this recording out uh, later this afternoon. Thank you.